Okay, here's part two. This is a, a short little update um, which displays um, the iPad version of the clock. Now this is a much larger display. The iPad screen is a thousand plus by 700 plus pixels, so it's quite big. It's actually four or five times bigger than the original Apple computer. Um, so working with that real estate gave me a lot of freedom to enlarge things. So the displays, the individual images are now 80 pixels by 80 pixels. There's more room. You can actually stand several feet away from the device, from the iPad, and you can, you can see it and actually understand what's going on. Now the big thing about the iPad display is I've implemented this new little uh, interface um, uh, bit of eye candy that they call popovers. So on the iPhone, if I wanted to change the settings for something, what I would do is I would, I would select this button, I would do a tap on this button here, and it would flip over to a whole new page. But on the iPad it's different since we have a lot of real estate. So if I do a simulated tap, it actually pops up with the uh, exact same uh, setup options that I had before. But the really cool thing is, since it's all real time, if, for example, I select the moon animation, it instantly changes. You can see it in, in the background changing. And I can say, you know, turn the human time off, and it fades away, and go back to here, turn it on again. Um, and the same idea as far as bings and bongs. If, if I do a rotate, it's similar. And actually, I probably have more room to make this area here even larger, which I, I probably will, because the idea is to make it visible from a distance. Because one of the things, this is me thinking like th two or three years into the future. Two or three years into the future, there's going to be the iPad 4 or whatever out. And people with iPad 2s are going to want to, you know, something to do with them. And this is a super handy gadget in the kitchen, so why not have a nice little clock ready for it? Uh, but a big display. Now, just to, just to complete things, one thing I forgot to mention in the last video, part one, is that in the next release, there's several things that I want to do. Number one is what's called localization, and that lets me um, have the application support multiple different languages. And I'm thinking initially to do English, um, uh, German, French, uh, as well as can Cantonese and potentially Mandarin, because there's, of course, a huge market in China for this sort of stuff. Um, so that's the first thing I want to do for version 2. But also in version 2, I want to extend the, the whole sort of theme idea to um, allow me as the architect of the theme to specify fonts and colors and potentially even sizes. So for the moon theme, for example, well, actually, let's go to the, uh, let's say the fireworks theme. What I would like here, since the fireworks are nice and red, and this actually is a firework from 2006 here in Vancouver, launched by China, go figure, um, the next big iPhone, iPad application market. What I'd like to do, though, is I'd like to have the colors of the digits and, and the fonts complement the graphic. So like a light red or something, or orange. So the next version will expand on the theme idea to provide a lot more um, fine tuning. And now if I flip it back to regular mode, bloop, turns around and, and now go for the, um, the Earth theme. And this, this certainly is something you have to see in front of you because the iPad is huge, you know, nine inches from corner to corner. Um, so anyway, that's part two, a bit of futures as well as how it looks on the iPad. And from a developer perspective, um, getting the code functioning from the iPhone onto the iPad was very, very straightforward. Um, but dealing with the setting of the actual graphics and stuff was a real challenge as well as um, learning about the this popover control and that's it